Hey everybody, what's up? It's Tim Michael. Welcome to another Tim Michael Arts video right here on my main channel, Tim Michael Arts, where I do tons of drawings and tutorials and things like that. So I've taught you guys a couple different things in my more recent videos that are really useful to help the traditional artist become more of a digital artist by using traditional techniques in digital art. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing I did in my previous video where I used crosshatching to create a character um, and turn it into more of a realism character, but I did it in black and white. This time I'm going to go ahead and do it in color and depending on how I feel we may go to one of two different ways. If not, then I'll try to describe those two different ways as we go through it. Okay? Thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope that you enjoy yet another one here. And then of course, make sure to go take a look at my new channels, Legacy Studio Productions, where I do reviews and uh, tons of games and playthroughs, at least I hope to. I haven't had a lot of chance to do that, but I've been interested in doing that. And then also my brand new channel, which I'm really excited about, um, and I would really hope that you would get involved in that, and just look up um, Ask Tim. And I know it sounds kind of stupid, but it is a work in progress that I'm really excited about. And uh, it's just a bunch of answering life's questions, and it's a lot of fun for me to make. It's a bit more dramatic. It's a bit more um, a chance for me to actually act and have more fun in my videos instead of just, here's what we're going to do in this drawing video. This is supposed to be a little bit more interesting and even down to almost, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Wheezy Waiter, but Wheezy Waiter is hilarious. And a lot of the stuff that he does is, um, you know, just talk about topics and things and make it interesting. And I've been kind of interested in doing something of that same sort of nature, not exactly, but still have some fun. So take a look at that. The links will be in the description below. It would mean a lot to me if you go over there and subscribe, um, even if you don't want to, but just showing your support, that would be awesome. Okay. So let's go ahead and get down with this. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just grab a color and start doing my thing and just start inking something up. Doesn't really matter what color I want to go with. Um, and I don't know, maybe I'll do another crazy drawing of me or something. I need to get some more reference photos of people, huh? Maybe, maybe I'll do maybe like a, a Batman character or something just because I haven't actually drawn anybody else in a while <laughs> except me. I've uh, been doing a lot of projects and trying to get my new uh, YouTube channel off the ground as much as possible. And that has taken a lot of my focus for the past couple days, couple weeks. Something I've been very excited about. Okay. And I'm also trying some new things here with my recording system. I'm actually recording using my computer off of my camera. That's working as a bit of a monitor, so... I usually tell you guys the kind of fun stuff I'm up to. Uh, and I've been trying to learn more about making things hopefully easier on myself when it comes to um, doing more of these kinds of drawings and things. So, All right, for those of you who are Batman fans, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I'm more of, a, um, more of a Marvel fan than a DC fan myself, uh, but that doesn't mean I can't attempt it. So... Anyone who hates it out there, I'm sorry. Um, that's just how it goes. I personally like Wolverine, and I like Iron Man the best. Those are my favorites. Batman? Eh, who knows. But I'm going to try and do the same thing as I did before of um, focusing on getting some depth in this and also try to add some color. Now, obviously... Batman isn't the best option, so maybe we'll make him purple or something just to <laughs> get some more of that option out there to make it look a little bit more colorful. Maybe he'll be a colorful Batman. He'll be a rainbow Batman. That'd be awkward. Let me drop his mouth way down low because I'm an exaggerator. That's what I do. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and grab another pencil and maybe just start sketching in some more details. Is my pressure sensitivity on? I can't even tell. I don't know if it is. I think it is. Try a different pencil. Yeah, it's on. Okay. Ooh, that's how, that one's actually kind of fun. I might try that. Maybe the grittiness will help out the artwork a little bit. 
So my ultimate goal here, like I did before in the previous video, is to come up with a real honest to goodness sketch. And then from that sketch, I will um, take it and simply blend it using Manga Studio's blend tool. And if, if you don't know much about this program, it is an amazing program for illustrators. I love it. Um, it is um, absolutely uh, perfect. Well, no, it's not perfect, but it is excellent for the stuff that I do when it comes to doing commissions for clients where I'm drawing tons of caricatures every day. And that's one of the reasons why I don't draw as many caricatures on here, because usually I'm drawing caricatures throughout the rest of the day and or whenever I get my commissions in. It's been a little slower recently. Uh, it's just that time of the season. I'm expecting it will pick up as the months move ahead. Um, but when it comes down to it, you know, I just love this program for everything it does. It has the most amazing inking. Um, I wanted to call it an inking syntax, which I know that doesn't make any sense at all. I don't think I'm even using the right word. But just the idea that the uh, the program just does an absolutely awesome job of of making it feel realistic. Without, if I draw a straight line, it looks like a straight line. Where if I did it in Photoshop, even if I did a slow one, it would look like chunk, 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 chunk. It would be really messy. And so that's why I just love Manga Studio. I am definitely an advocate of the Manga Studio. And of course, someone in my comments did let me know. It's not, it's not, it's either, it's not manga, it's manga. Or if it's not manga, it's manga. It, it's one of those two. The main thing is be thankful I don't call it anime. Okay, there you go. Because you know what happens if I call it anime, then you're all going to go down my threads and go, Anime, it's an animation. You don't draw animation. You know, you know fine, whatever. <laughs> whatever. All right, so there we go. I'm just going to go ahead and start just dropping in some of these tones that I'm going to try and capture with the um, with the, the blending brush. And so the goal is just to to literally crosshatch or scrap, scrape in as much as I want when it comes to uh, tones and values. And obviously, to demonstrate this, I'm not going to do everything to make him look shiny, if you will, because um, I'm trying to actually show more of a blending technique. So I probably didn't choose the best character to do this with, but uh, I know you guys understand because I never know what I'm going to draw when I get on here. Uh, by the way, thank you to all my patrons who showed up to the patron live stream. That was a lot of fun. Had a good time and looking forward to the next one as always. And if you don't know uh, about that, you can learn more at patreon.com forward slash to Michael Arts. And uh, by the way, also to let you know, there is a new patron uh, Patreon open for my new channel. And if you want to learn more about that, you just look up patreon.com official Ask Tim. Okay, a lot of the ways you're going to find me for that is by looking up official Ask Tim because someone else already stole the other Ask Tim. So I am the official one. Which actually is kind of cool. I'm all right with that because I hope that it goes big. Go big or go home, right? Okay, so I got most of those tones in there. I'm not going to worry too much about the top of the head right now. Um, and some of this I'm going to touch up with the airbrush. This is mainly about teaching you guys how to use the, that, the same technique with colors. So I'm going to apply some colors also to the interface here. And the cool thing is I can do this all pretty much on the same layer because I'm going to try and blend as much of it in uh, as possible as this goes along. So you'll see as we go along here, I'm just going to kind of color it in very roughly. And actually, I kind of like some of the orange tones that are in there, so I may just be able to keep going with that. Okay. And just because I can, I am going to go ahead and drop in a little blue into the eyes. I know usually people keep them white. I'm more of the uh, illustrator who likes to make those kinds of things glow. So some blue does really good. And then I'm looking for um, a bit of a more harsh tone for the skin. Uh, that might not be the right tone, but that's a nice thing yeah, with testing it. It'll blend as it sees fit and I can work out my my values and stuff after the fact. So I'll just drop in kind of whatever I want for right now. Okay, let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and grab my blending tool, and here's where rubber meets the road. Ready? Okay. Right now, its opacity is kind of set pretty high, 
So that color stretch is set pretty high, and the brush density is set pretty low. So we'll see. We might come back here and make some adjustments here in a second. Let's drop the color stretch down a little bit. And you can see it's trying to grab a lot of the white of the paper and a lot of whatever the, the most intensive color is. And as I grab this and pull it around, you'll see it won't grab much blacks and uh, it will grab everything else unless there's an intense amount of that individualized color there. So you'll see as we continue on here. But the goal for me is not just to do this in one pass. I can build this up over several passes. And you can see that as I move into these different areas, I can look for specific tones and drag them into other tones to get that balance. I'm going to grab from this outline here and pull some of that black in from the outline to start shaping and forming some of this mask. Cool. Same with the other side, focusing mainly on grabbing that black from the center and then I can kind of spread it out evenly among this area. Nice. Okay. And of course I can go back in later and add what I want. All right, coming up on our next test in about 20 seconds, my camera is going to hopefully switch to the next video for me. So if you see me disappear and come back, then obviously something happened. Or if you see me disappear completely, then I miss you and I hope you enjoyed my face. So we'll see if it continues or not. Because I am using my computer as well to attempt this. I'm using two computers to record this, actually. I'm a man of, of um, I was about to say obsession, which is true too, but I was thinking more of, um, um, I don't know, what's the word meaning I do way too much for very little results? <laughs> I do everything in large amounts. Anyway, you can see it's coming along really cool. Um, there's a lot of tones and things going on in here that look really awesome. That's obviously not the um, <laughs> knight showing off all of his dark glory. So we'll have to see if I can come back in and work that out. But let's go ahead and start digging into this face here a little bit more where this is really gonna be where this, tu this tutorial is gonna really play, play its key. So in the same idea as before, I'm just grabbing all these tones and look at how smooth uh, that suddenly gets. I can even go into the, the black in the mask and pull that down to get more shadow in the face. And I'm using very saturated skin tones, so that might be overdoing it a little bit, but I can go back over top here in just a second and I can make more changes. Pull this down, pull this around. I'm gonna leave some white uh, for the chin here. I'm just gonna kind of do a square here to kind of just leave that little white highlight there. And I love this because it's really giving it a, a very um, painterly look. And honestly, when it comes to my artwork, when I do more realism stuff, um, I don't want it to look um, perfectly real. I'm, nor am I that skilled, but I don't want it to look that real. I want it to have some of that, that texture and tone behind it. I want it to look like there's brush, brush strokes in there. I want it to look like there's breath strokes in there. Breath strokes. Yes, please. All right, now, my other goal as I go along here is to blend out as much of my outline as possible. Now, I could have done my outline on a separate layer, but the truth is I want to use some of that black to darken in some of the tones on the bottom of some of these features. That's really going to help actually drop the, the shadows in certain places where that's going to be a focus. Like right here under the nose, I can grab a lot of this black here, and I can grab it and pull it down, and it's just going to perfectly pop that out and it's going to look really sweet. Okay. So, so far so good. Now, I think that's a good first pass, but I'm not done yet. So let's go ahead and go back to my pencil. I'm going to stick with a rough pencil. That's kind of a cool tool. I'm going to use my Alt key or what I have programmed on my Cintiq here. I got a button, bunch of buttons programmed on the side. And all I'm going to do is just grab from different tones and go in and brush in more of these marks here. Just like we did in the previous tutorial, you can crosshatch, you can do whatever you want just to build up these tones um, wherever you feel you need them strongest. And then once again, make sure they're kind of bold. Go back in and blend from the inside out. So you're grabbing 
from that inner color and you're pulling it outwards it will quickly swallow itself so you got to be real careful with how intense or not intense you decide to go with that same with the other side and you can see it goes right away so something that might benefit you would be to actually set your opacity a little bit lower um, or your um, your color stretch to to make it a little bit more um, a little less sensitive maybe it won't pull stuff around nearly as much if you drop the density or the color stretch okay so it looks pretty cool so far i think that's a good start let's go ahead and go crazy with the mask a little bit more um and i'm gonna go ahead and drop in some more heavy blacks so i actually have one of the buttons on my pen here this bottom button right down there i have that one set for um my alt key very very easy to work with and since if you're a more of a painterly artist where you paint instead of you know ink and then color and then make it look more cartoony uh, that button's going to save your life. And then if you want to, you could even program the other button. I use the other button as a right click, but another I know several people, and I have done this in the past, where I've used that button as an undo button, and that has also been a lifesaver. Now, I do have that programmed in the side of my board, or you can do Control-Z in Manga Studio, or Control-Alt-Z in um, Photoshop, okay? But it's a lifesaver. You'll, you'll love the Alt key. I'll hail the Alt key. Okay, so now we're going to go crazy and really start leveling in some more black. And I'm going to attempt to do some highlights, but I do want to keep it nice and dark. Maybe for kicks, like I said, I'll toss some purple in there or something just to give it some variation. And I can even draw some lines just to let me know where I want this depth to really stand out. So I want that to kind of inset into the face. So I'll kind of draw out that shape. Um, same over here. As that nose cuts into there, it'll kind of be like that. Okay, bottom of the face. Move it out this way and drop it down. This way, drop it down. I love this technique. I don't always get to use it, but I love it. It just it makes things so much more interesting. It makes artwork pop. And when it works for some of my techniques, when I'm able to take the time to do something a little bit more fancy and realistic, it just explodes. For those of you that have watched this far, thank you so much. Usually I would anticipate that retention has dropped. Some of you have fast forwarded. That's up to you. I actually don't blame you one bit. I have caught myself fast forwarding through my own videos. And yes, I do watch my own videos. I am a narcissistic like that. Um, and probably a hundred of these views that you see uh, in here are probably mostly me. That's not true, I hope. Anyway, I, I, might, I might claim five. How about that? I'll claim five. Okay. Most of the time it's me just clicking in to see how many people have looked at my video. Okay. So there we go. And you can see it, there's a bit of depth in there just in that sketch. But now let's go in here and I'm going to drop my color stretch a bit more and just see what that does. Let's try and drop it way down. What if I drop it to next to nil? What will happen? It's actually doing very nice. It's not really pulling it very far. It's kind of more of a, a very tight blend. If I stretch it out a whole lot, yeah, you see how I'm able to carry that color out a lot further? So it depends on how far you want to carry it out. All right, going in here, really trying to grab the deep stuff. And my goal is to kind of, um, kind of sculpt, if you will. Take that deep tone and sculpt out the lower part of the shape. Really think about sculpting. You're trying to show where the depth is and where the light is. So sculpt. Okay, color stretch is going a bit too much. I'll calm down the intensity and the stretch, and hopefully I can chill that out a little bit. Okay. 
nice and deep. And it's still pulling from the colors underneath, so it's still going to get some of those orange tones and other tones, but it's doing really, really great. If you consider that I just took nothing and turned it into this so far, I think that's really cool. And it's a great technique. I know I'm doing it on my Cintiq here, and I want you to look at the previous video where I did this all completely in black and white on, I think it was another drawing of me, Narcissist, remember that? Um, and I did that one on my Intuos board, which is this guy right here. Now this one's the large one. I do have a medium one that I believe I did that on. This is my large. Um, and it's, I, I was able to do this good, if not better, admittedly. Um, so don't worry, you don't have to have high-tech crazy technology. A, a Wacom Bamboo, or Wacom Bamboo, will run you, depending on if you get it used or new, will run you 50, 60 bucks. If you get it new, it's like 70 or 80. It's not bad at all. And it might be a small board, but you can learn to work with it. And I know a lot of people who are professionals, 100% absolute professionals, just killing it in the art world. And all they're using is a bamboo, or they're using a Intuos. It's, it's amazing what you can do with something simple. Think about people making a lot of money doing drawings for other people and just using an Intuos, or just using a bamboo. Seriously, to talk about low overhead, it's awesome. Of course, I'm expensive. I have a very expensive taste. And I do everything huge, which means I pay a wee fortune for everything I do. Like, I could easily do this same recording with a web camera and just one computer, but no, I have to have my wonderful donated T5i camera that I use for everything now. Thank you, Roy. And I have my computer set up so I can see my monitor. I have my little recorder set up. It's just ridiculous. <sighs> Tim, that's not part of the tutorial. Get back to what you're doing, you narcissist. Fine. You know, it's 11.26 p.m. right now, as I'm recording this. I should be asleep getting ready for work tomorrow, but no, I'm making these for you. For you, my peeps. For you. You fast-forwarded again, didn't you? <laughs> okay. All right, so you can see that you can just take your time to really build this stuff up and really shape out the face as you're wanting it. And the nice thing about these this color stretch is I can take, like, see this deep black in here, and I can grab that sucker, and I can just pull it down here along the nose. And then with that, I can take that and shape out this part of the triangle where, where it's an important place to fill that in. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do more with that maybe in a little bit, if I decide to come back to it. Let's go back down to the skin, because remember, this is supposed to be about color. Once again, camera's going to flip to hopefully another... Um, track so we'll see if that behaves itself we're in 23 minutes so far so thank you for watching if you have so far um let's go ahead and grab some dark tones and let's go ahead and go with some something darker let's try with some more orange in here just to really see if we can bring out some crazy um unnatural tones out of some of these shadows almost almost uh, saturated tones Kind of like he's in sunset, and the sunset is casting the shadows. I want to make this as vibrant as possible, so you can kind of see how it plays out in the shading process. Because, I mean, see how simple this is. I've created all this from just a bunch of scribbles, which anyone can do. Gonna color that in there a bit. It's gonna alter the tone a little. And we're gonna go back in here. And I wanna, because I want this to stay dark, I'm gonna reach from inside and I'm gonna pull outward. I only wanna use that orange tone as a, a subtle hint. I don't want it to be a blowout of orange all over the place. Grabbing from the dark black there, because I want that to be pulled around. And right now I have my color stretch set pretty high, so I'll drop that back just a wee bit. 
Because I'm going to, like I said, it's more about pulling and shoving. <laughs> pulling and shoving. I'm having a football game on this guy's face. I'm going to pull the, pull the oranges around, and then if it's just a bit too much, say that this area down here is just a bit too much, which it certainly is, I can easily come in with this highlight tone and cut right into it. And I can just go back and forth. It's really one of the techniques, one of the most popular videos that I've put up on YouTube is a technique where I teach people how to um, do blending in Photoshop. And it's something that before blending tools came out in Photoshop, it was a must. And even the first blending tool that came out in Photoshop, it was absolutely terrible in the old, in the old Photoshop versions. CS6 and CC have really fixed it up a little bit. Um, but depending on what kind of computer you can have, it's a very CPU intensive tool. Um, you know, if you've got supercomputers or just a really nice production computer, usually it's not so bad if you're working on a, a smaller scale project. But if you're working on something that's supposed to be an 8 foot tall banner or something crazy like that, then you're going to experience some major lag. And I usually work on very large scale files. So you can see the blending is doing really good. I mean, even with such an unnatural tone, he looks like he's majorly sunburned, but you can tell that it just really has a nice effect. I'm going to go ahead and get some pink in here and see if I can work on some lips and maybe we'll alter the skin tone even a little bit more um, in just a second. Uh, the other technique that I'm obviously not going to do, um, just because of the amount of time I've put into this already, but the other technique um, would be to go ahead and do your sketch completely in black and white and then to take it and change its hues with the hue and saturation and change it to a skin tone hue. And once you have that skin tone hue in there, then you can blend it. If you do want to see me do that, I'll make one more video, but you have to hit the like button to let me know, okay? So hit that like button to let me know. Actually, better yet, don't do that. Here's what I want you to do. If you hit it already, just go ahead and keep it there. Don't turn off the like button. It's okay. I know you like it. I mean, I just thank you. Uh, go down to the description below. There's going to be a straw poll in there. Click on that link. It'll take you to a website where you can vote for what we're going to do next. I told myself I would do more straw polls, and I mean it. I will. I think I think straw poles are cool. So make sure that you keep an eye out for those straw poles and cast your vote. If you want to be a part of what happens next on here, then your vote is going to be a major count towards what we're going to do next. I've been trying to get a feel for what everyone likes because I, as you guys know, I do all sorts of crazy stuff. I do um, drawings on you know paper with Copic markers. I do watercolors. I do um, uh, digital artwork, I do uh, all sorts of crazy stuff. And I don't know what people like, and so if I have you guys cast your vote, that helps me know what the majority likes and where to go from there. Okay, he looks like he's wearing lipstick. Let's calm that down a little bit. Grabbing some of the skin tones with my pencil, I'll go back in here and just calm the lips down with the same technique. Same, same technique. And actually, I don't want to do too much on the top lip. I might take that actually darker instead of lighter. But I can just blend in, reaching from the inside and pulling the light tones out of it. I can blend it outwards. Get this really smooth look and feel. And I'm going to grab the bottom now. I'm just going to try and blend out the lips as much as possible. Because for girls, obviously, it's kind of nice to have those bold, defining lips. For guys, not so much. Now for guys, what I would prefer to do, grab a nice dark tone here, and I'm going to brush in some of this dark tone on the top lip. Okay. Let's grab that and pull it through. And this is a technique that makeup artists do all the time, actually, and I meant to do a video of that. I wanted to actually record a makeup artist putting makeup on someone and showing how much the technique is so much like um, painting. And you lay down a hard tone and then you smooth it out if you feel it needs to be smoothed out. Sometimes keeping those hard tones in there are, is the way to go. Okay. So far, so good. And we're already at 29 minutes. Oh, it says it stopped automatically. Hopefully it's restarted. <laughs> we're back on again. And I am certain my sensor is probably getting super hot, so it's probably time to go ahead and wrap this up. 
I hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I know it's kind of the same thing of what we did last time. I just wanted to show you guys that it was actually absolutely possible to use that same technique to do color. And if you aren't certain of your tones that you actually want to use uh, to blend the face in, you can kind of just mess with it. And if you don't like it, you can just gently alter the tones. Like I admit, the bottom of his face isn't looking quite the way I want it to just yet because it's too vibrant right now in the areas where I would want shadow. So I can easily go in here and I can grab a darker tone of whatever I want, um, even, even into the blacks even. Um, and I can go ahead and brush that in here just like this. And if you really want to, you can even come up to your layers and tell it to lock the transparency. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep everything in that layer locked in. So anything outside this area isn't going to be affected. And because of that, now I can really go in here and have even more fun. Usually if you lock the transparency, something that's really important would be to go ahead and color in the background with an actual background skin tone or whatever the, the tone is that you're going to be using the most. That's going to be a key thing because if you have white in the background, it's not going to shade it out as smoothly as you would like because it's still reading off the transparency of what has white behind it. All right, it's leaving some of that in there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off for now. and You'll see that's going to blend it. And the thing is, I mean, you can take your artwork all the way to the finish with this technique. It's awesome. And it's just a matter of time and patience. But if you want to start building up that 3D effect, you can do that. And I mean, look at this. I'm smoothing out tones with this same brush with the blending tool in Manga Studio. And it's awesome because I didn't have to go grab any other colors. I'm not having to do alt and grabbing different tones. It's all just gently tugging and pulling all the colors that are already there. And like I said, I can take those colors and move them into each other. And then blend them into each other. And really dig out those tones. And then if you like what you got, but you want to do a little bit more, you can go grab your airbrush. Let's say we do want to make him a bit darker. And I do very, very light density airbrushing so that's just me but very very light and I prefer to build up my tones with light washes over going in with hard tones personally let's go ahead and make it a little bigger I want it to look as smooth as possible I mean, all the way down to showing stubble in the face if you wanted to. You can get even some of that in there. Terrible looking Batman, isn't it? <laughs> it's about the technique, not the artwork. <laughs> Alright, looks cool, looks cool. Um, I do want to harden up the brow here. I want to show a very obvious hard line. This is his eyebrow that's truly cutting down and then cutting back up. So I'm going to hit that real quick on both sides. Okay, and I said I'd shoot some purple in here, so I'm going to do that. Hang on just a second. Just really intensify these dark tones. Maybe I'll even really intensify it by making my pencil huge. Just to kind of show what you can do with, like, really thick blacks. I'm going to get hate mail for how bad this guy looks. <laughs> That's 
not how you draw Batman. He drew his arch nemesis. Ugly drawn man. There you go. All right. All right, let's knock in some purple here. I was thinking like a, we'll do something like this. And then do the same thing, but I'm going to cross hatch it in there just because I call this tutorial cross hatching. Try and put it where I think the highlights will be. And start wrapping this up. Oh, let me put these two layers together. I had them separated. Now they'll blend. Will it blend? You guys watch that channel? Will it blend? Why on earth would you blend an iPhone 6? Yeah, we make so much money sticking stuff in blenders here that we just bought an iPhone 6. Actually, it's my ex-wife's. <laughs> she doesn't need it anymore. I got it in the divorce. Terrible. I got the cat in the divorce. I don't even like the cat. Will it blend? Anyone want cat puree? Oh, you cat lovers out there, I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry. I don't like cats. I'm sorry. I'm going to get so many dislikes for saying that I hate cats, but... I mean, seriously, cats don't love you. Cats aren't Christians. My cat is though Christian. Sorry, when a cat comes in and rubs itself against your leg because it wants attention. Where a dog comes in and is like, Hi, how are you? Where a cat's like rubbing up itself up against you and then you reach down to pen it and it's like, Leave me alone. <laughs> Stupid cats. Watch me get like, a thousand unsubscribers from this one video. He drew Batman wrong, and he did. Then he talked about cats. He's an evil person. Hopefully, I can make up for it for the thousand subscribers I'll get because, dude, the guy loves dogs, and I hate Batman, and he drew him terribly. Okay, trying to mix in these purple tones. To try and help prove my point here. I'm not really focusing on getting it blended the way I want. You know, while I'm coloring this in, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put another video over in the same video, and it's going to be a demo of my very first um, video that I did for um, my new channel. It's going to be my intro. So if you like it, please make sure to stop by my intro for my new channel, the Ask Tim channel, and uh, become a subscriber. It'll either be that it'll, or it'll be one of my actual um, answering questions videos, Dear and Tim, I hope that I'm it inspires you guys. So at least you can watch online, something else or listen to something else uh, while I finish up the last few minutes of this. Okay, so I'm going to keep idea. working on this for so another 10 minutes question, or so, really isn't, guess, and uh, no and you guys Honestly, can see it, and I will just keep my mouth shut, and you guys enjoy watching that new pilot. How many pervy guys and girls you want to deal with? Yes, even girls can be pervy. Trust me, I've seen it. So my wife and I actually met online. It wasn't some crazy love affair on World of Warcraft between a sexy blood elf and a draenei, or as you non-gamers would call, Beauty and the Beast. And it definitely wasn't one of those stupid right Tinder swipes. But we did actually meet on a dating website. A lot of credit actually needs to go to my wife's grandmother who told her to go online and look for her sexy stud muffin to marry. Wise advice, mama. Wise advice. In saying all that, my wife got exactly what she wanted, except in a slightly overweight, muffin-topped, full-bearded kind of package. 
but of course the word muffin was in there, so I fit the bill. While she was on this website, she was approached by a lot of older men stating things like, I know we just met two days ago, but can I buy a plane ticket and come and visit you this weekend? I think I love you just by looking at your profile picture. Do you consider yourself to be a good kisser? I like cats. And admittedly, most of the girls that I met on these dating websites were individuals who were crying out for friendships. They were going through depression, they told me that they cut themselves, and some of them even admitted to trying to commit suicide. My heart would go out to these girls, and I would feel so bad for them that I would sit there for literally hours just listening to them talking about their depression and what is hurting them and why their life is in shambles. And it would often be a very one-sided conversation that would just be a constant pity party throughout the whole day. In the end, they just needed a friend to listen to them, and I was that friend. Needless to say, my wife and I really weren't getting what we were looking for in these websites. And then once we actually found each other on the dating website, it was like escape from Alcatraz to get out of there and get on with our lives. So in saying all that, one thing that my wife and I had that I don't see many people having is a completely different set in priorities when it comes to dating websites. For her, her heart wasn't completely into it. She was really there just trying to appease her grandmother and maybe hoping for a friendship or two out of the whole thing. She wasn't looking for a relationship. And for me, I wasn't there trying to look for a relationship either. I was just trying to look for friends of the opposite sex. Liar. Honestly, that was the truth. I was raised by very godly parents who taught me that this was the time in my life to meet people of the opposite sex and have wonderful friendships with them. Who knows that a relationship might actually build up out of all those friendships. But my goal wasn't to just jump in into a relationship. And I think these priorities really helped us get to our success because I never pounced on my wife like an anteater on an ant farm. And she never felt threatened by my muffin top studliness or gorgeous green eyes. So here are seven things I would suggest you keep in mind. Take it slow. Moving too fast is just straight pervy. Seriously, instant red lights. Stalker in the area, stalker in the area. Definitely just stay away from crazy pet names and millions of compliments within the first five minutes, okay? Be prepared to walk into some serious awkwardness. Seriously, if you are a woman, you are about to truly learn how stupid the male species can actually be. Protect yourself at all times and have your hand ready on the friend button the instant you start feeling uncomfortable or start feeling threatened by that individual. As you get to know this person, do some research on them. Make sure that they are legitimate. If anything doesn't add up, just scoot away, get away gently, and let them go find someone else. Trust me. You are not the center of the world. They will go find other people and leave you alone. Don't release too much information about yourself all at once. Oh my gosh, so like I'm a Pisces and I like all sorts of chocolate and I like tons and tons and tons of spaghetti. And actually I like to mix chocolate and spaghetti together. It just makes this awesome concoction. It's absolutely delicious. Like all the spaghetti is a concoction. It's just absolutely amazing. Giving too much information at once is gonna scare that person away. But seriously, if that person is a scam artist or they're just trying to get your money or they're just out to hurt you, you're giving away far too much information all at once that can get you in a lot of trouble. Just take your time, start small, and work your way there. You will be rewarded as your friendship grows with this other individual, and all of this stuff that you feel like you have to push out immediately is going to come out really naturally, and it makes it so much more fun and so much more enjoyable just to learn about each other in a natural sense. Not the, oh my gosh, <laughs> kind of way. Don't give in to temptation or accept less than what you're expecting. Seriously, that has future divorce written all over it. Protect yourself from that person even when you begin to feel yourself growing in love with them. Protect yourself and don't give in to those temptations because you don't want to regret something later on because you learned something bad about that person or just realize they're not the person for you. Don't go giving your heart to people online. Find the one person that you can dedicate yourself to. And also, do not just pick anyone that shows their appreciation for you because you are going to find a lot of people who like you for who you are on the internet. I promise you that. And you're going to want to give in to each one of them. Take the time to figure out what you like in a person and what the maturity level is that you need and what's going to help you grow as an adult as you have a hopefully married relationship with that individual. That is key. Don't give in to something less than what you're expecting. Have realistic expectations of what you need in your life. If you don't have that, things are just going to go wrong and a divorce is in your future. And the most important one, listen to this, guys. Are you listening? Okay. Do not expect to find your knight in shining armor or your princess stuck in the tower in a bar or club. Are you my happily forever after? <laughs> Seriously, a bar or club is not a place to look for a long-term relationship. And in the same way that you wouldn't go looking in those places, don't think that you can find a long-term relationship in one nightstand.com or 
bigbootychicas.com. When it comes down to it, if you're looking for a long-term relationship, marriage, all that jazz, then you need to stop looking for quick relationships. Take your time to get to know someone as a friend. Really learn about them. My wife and I, we waited three years until I asked her to marry me. And in the first year, it was just focusing on our friendship and getting to know each other. That was the key part. Really understanding who she was. And honestly, in the five years that I have known my wife, I can only remember one day that I wasn't in communication with her. So over that 1,826 days that we've had so far in our lovely marriage, there's only been one day that we haven't been in communication and we have never gotten bored of each other. You can easily get bored in a relationship. It can get old. It can get tiring. So spend time in friendship. Learn about this person. I can tell you the rewards of growing in your friendship, leading into a relationship, leading into marriage is the best and most exciting experience you will ever have. When it comes to online dating, the only thing you can really do is talk because you have a webcam pointed in your face, they have a webcam pointed in theirs, and all you can do is learn about each other. And since my wife and I were 2,000 miles apart, that's all we could do was to focus on coming up with things to talk about. And it was wonderful. One of the many blessings of being in an online dating relationship is that you focus on talking. She never looked at me and said, we don't talk enough. It was all about connecting with each other in conversation because you really couldn't do much else except play hours of mini clips pool and she kicked my butt every time. I personally feel that my wife and I had success because we were made for each other from the very beginning of time. Aww. No, seriously, we prayed for each other and seeked each other out, trusting in God to direct us to where that other person would be. We made an effort to look in places where we hoped that other person would be looking for us, like church or work, and at that time I was working in a Christian ministry, or in online dating websites that were Christian and led Christians towards each other. So if you believe in God, you have to believe that he has someone awesome already made up for you from the very beginning of time. If you don't believe in God, no judgment for me. Just look in places where you're going to find someone who's going to meet your needs and have the maturity level that's going to make you be a better man or woman. So should you do online dating? That answer is completely up to you. You will end up in very awkward situations that will put your teeth on edge. You will question the sanity of everyone on the internet. And if everyone seems sane to you, then you're the insane one. But it's all a growth experience, and honestly, in wisdom and in patience, you could actually succeed in it. So that's it. That's the answer to your question. No yes, no no. Simply just figure it out for yourself. But that's what I've dealt with, that's what I've experienced, and that's what I'm going to share with you. So thank you for asking. I hope it helped. And do not come back to me arguing with me if it just does not work out. So anyway, yeah. If you want to leave comments, you can leave them in the comment box below. If you want to send me a question and have it a little bit more anonymous, then you can email me at officialasktim at gmail.com. And then, of course, go take a look at some of my other channels, Tim Michael Arts, where I do speed paints and tutorials in artwork, drawing digitally. You can go to Legacy Studio Productions, where I do product reviews and tons of game playthroughs and things of that nature. And then, of course, you can come here back to Ask Tim and watch all of these narcissistic videos where I give you my opinion that you never asked for. And don't forget, you can support us by bookmarking our Amazon affiliate code down below. You'll find that in the description. Just take that, save that as your bookmark. Every time you go into Amazon, go in through that link. Amazon will give us a little cutback for sending you guys over there because of our referral, which would be very helpful to us. Also, you can support us on Patreon.com. Just go to the description below where you'll find our Patreon link that'll take you to the Ask Tim Patreon where you can donate per video and your support is super helpful so we can continue making these videos. So that's it. That's the end of this video. I'm done. I'm done until more questions come in. Okay. All right. So hopefully somewhere around now, <laughs> um, this video that you've been watching for me is about done. And I should be totally wrapping this up because this video is probably one of my much longer videos than usual. But I hope that in the process of you watching that video, one, I have maybe inspired you to go take a look at my new channel um, and uh, become a subscriber and a supporter. Um, it's something that I, my heart has been crying out to do for a long time because I really, really love the idea of just answering people's questions. And I uh, actually used to be um, a youth pastor and used to really enjoy the time of counseling that I got to have with people. Not saying that I'm always right, not saying I'm even close to being right, 
but I definitely enjoy the opportunity to speak with people and possibly, you know, have a positive output towards someone, you know, give someone some some guidance or, or some well wishes or something. And, and I want to also have some fun and be a little bit more <laughs> dramatic, I guess. I have a theory that I'm planning on doing with this channel, possibly, that's going to make it a little bit more quirky and interesting, um, which will hopefully, you know, maybe bring more people in, where it also allows me the chance to be more... Y you may have noticed I kind of went bipolar a little bit. Uh, for a little bit of it, I seemed mean and, and rude, and then another little bit, I seemed really nice and you know, offering really important advice and then went back to being super really mean and rude when I told people to subscribe and stuff. And I really like the fact that I have a place where maybe I can be a little bit more artistic in my, in my attitudes, in my, you know, just be an actor. I've always enjoyed acting. I've done some professional acting uh, a long, t long, long time ago uh, with, with my dad and with a, a couple production crews and things like that. I, I really had some very fun opportunities to actually do something a little bit more than just <laughs> be in my own videos and it was it was the funnest thing in the world to to be able to act i mean i'd say most people uh, a lot of people have gotten to try that chance maybe in one way or another and it's something you don't forget you know and and i've really wanted to try and do that again so i hope that you enjoyed watching that video and i hope that you've enjoyed watching this video hopefully i've made our you know Batman look a little bit more batty. I actually looked up a reference photo and <laughs> realized how far off I really was. So hopefully that gets him a little tiny bit closer. And if I really wanted to spend more time into it, I'm sure I could make him perfect. But I'm not going to do that because I don't like Batman that much. <laughs> and uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll like him more once um, once What's-His-Face comes in and takes over. Uh, whatever that new actor is. And I just got a whole bunch more dislikes because of saying that I might like it more with him in there instead of Christian Bale. Christian Bale did a good job, okay? Christian Bale did a really good job. But uh, I'm hoping that maybe this guy isn't so a bad man kind of feeling and a bit more interesting and exciting. We'll see. Who knows? I probably won't even see it when it comes out in theaters. A whole bunch more dislikes from that. <sighs> Darn. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, you can look me up here and take a look at all my videos here on Tim Michael Arts. You can see more on my secondary channel, Tim Michael Arts 2, where I do vlogs with my beautiful wife, Shay, kind of the behind the scenes of what I do here. And then, of course, you can go look at Legacy Studio Productions, where I do product reviews and also hopefully some games uh, playthroughs. I've been interested in maybe doing Minecraft, and I've done one or two episodes of, like, Kerbal Space Program, if you haven't heard of that. Um, that's something that I did on an old channel that I'm hoping to move over to the new channel. And then, most importantly, take a look at the new Ask Tim. And if you want to drop me an email for the Ask Tim, you can do that at officialasktim at gmail.com if you want to ask a question. Would love some of your questions to answer on there. I'm having a little bit of a brain fart when it comes to what to ask on there, so I would love your support on there. All right, thanks a lot, guys. You know what to do. There's tons of videos all over the place here, and all you need to do is just go and click one and enjoy yourself. You are uh, one ugly looking Batman. Click a video. I'm looking at you. Click a video. Click a video. Click a video. Click a video. Still watching? Tons of videos all over the place. Tons of them. Go click one. I'm acting like an idiot because you haven't clicked a video yet. All right, hey, I think that's going to do it. If you're still watching me, then obviously life has really gotten that boring for you. Okay, go on, get out of here. Seriously, go find a video. Go click on something. See ya.